Good evening, family. This is Frank, and I am trying a new way of doing my videos. I'm pre recording them. For some reason, I try to go on YouTube and do um, a video, and it just would not work. So they only gave me the option to do YouTube Live or uh, upload a video. So hopefully, this will work. Um, I'm, I'm coming tonight, um, and I'm talking about, in my talk tonight, about the a position of strength. A posi position of strength. I love uh, my former pastor, Pastor Dave Verdecchio. I believe he was the one that said that this is an upside-down kingdom for the most part. This is, a, and I'll explain that, that this is an upside-down kingdom. That the kingdom of God is not like the kingdoms of this world where um, they build up and build up and build up their defenses. I remember in the 80s, it was such a, uh, a big power struggle between the United States and the Soviet Union. Who had more weaponry? Who had more nuclear uh, bombs? Who had the best military? Who had the best navy in the world? And... But that, but this, but this kingdom of God is an upside down kingdom because to the naked eye we seem to be defeated sometimes. Sometimes we we have our legs cut off, and and sometimes we have issues, and sometimes we're falling apart. But I'm going to go into the Word of God, and I'm using my Bible, and I'm using, uh, I'm I'm coming from, excuse my eyes, I'm coming from the Book of Exodus, chapter fifteen, verse two. And then I'm also coming from the book of Psalms, chapter 5, verse 3. And it comes together. The Bible says, out of the mouth of two or three, let every word be established. That we, we don't build our whole doctrine, our whole philosophy on the word of God based upon one single verse. Because if it was truth, then the whole entire word of God would exclaim it. It would be shouted from the rooftops. It wouldn't be such a, a hidden thing, but it would, it, it would just be so evident because God does he said if the truth is hid it's hid to them that are lost and God doesn't want us to be lost but he wants us to be found and I'm going to read here the, the verse in Exodus says the Lord is my strength the Lord is my strength the reason for my song because he has saved me I praise and honor the Lord he is my God and the God of my ancestors. The Lord is my strength. The reason for my song. We have a lot of reasons to sing nowadays. People sing and they 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 they, they praise all type of things and all type of people and they're so excited when they fall in love and they, they're so excited when they're in relationships. They're so excited when they get new jobs. They're so excited when different things happen. But we don't want to make the mistake that they made in ancient Egypt where they worshipped the creation, where they worshipped the frogs, they worshipped the Nile, they worshipped the locusts, they worshipped the sun, they worshipped all these different forms of creation, they worshipped the Nile River because out of the Nile River flowed life. It was a source of strength in that land. And they worshipped all these things because without them, they would have been destroyed. The only difference between Egypt and the rest of the area was the Nile and everything that flowed from it. Where the Nile was, was fertile land. Where the Nile was, was life. And they worshipped all these things. But in this verse, we find out that the Lord is my strength. He's the reason for my song. Not all these other things. But the Lord is my strength. He is my song. Because he has saved me. See if you haven't been saved from nothing. Then you don't understand what I'm talking about. If you haven't been saved from anything. If you haven't been saved from yourself. If you haven't been saved from cycles of defeat. And depression and loneliness. And despair and everything falling apart if you haven't been saved from nothing you don't understand what I'm talking about reading this word it doesn't make sense to you
I praise and honor the Lord. He is my God and the God of my ancestors. Psalm 5 verse 3. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning. O Lord, in the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee. And will look up in the morning. Dr. Charles Stanley, I always quote him. And Dr. Ravi Zacharias also. Both of these great generals of the faith I've gone on to be with the Lord, but they had a ritual, if you might say, something they did religiously, and they they worshiped the Lord early in the morning. And I mentioned this, I think, on my last video, that Dr. Stanley would love to go take nature walks, and he would get lost in the woods, and he loved being out there early in the morning. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and I'll look up. I'll look up. Why? Because I have a whole day in front of me. I have a whole day in front of me. And I don't know how it's going to work out. I have plans. I have things that I have to do. And people are relying on me. People are counting on me. Jobs are requiring me to be there. And they expect me to perform at top peak efficiency, but I don't know what I'm going to do because have you ever left and, and you felt inept? You know, I know we're supposed to be strong all the time. I know we're supposed to be on top all the time. I know we're supposed to be always abounding in the work of the Lord. I know we're supposed to be always encouraging. I know we're supposed to be always on top of the heat, but guess what? Sometimes we're feeling like we're weak. And I'm talking about strength today. In these scriptures here, we hear about praise. We hear about rejoicing in the Lord. We hear about serving the Lord. We hear about worshiping the Lord early in the morning. These are things that set the tone not only for the day, but for our life. In our prayer group, I talked about Regular worship, routine worship, having a lifestyle of study. It says in the Talmud about um, the highest form of praise that we could give. Now, now, this isn't the word of God, but it's really a good reading. It's really something that, you know, you can learn a lot, you know, by reading ancient scriptures and not just the Word of God, that first and foremost is the Word of God, but we can learn something from people. But in the Talmud, it says the highest form of worship is studying the Word of God. Why? Because it takes a made-up mind. It takes a made-up mind. Anybody can scream and shout. Anybody can dance and sing. Anybody can do all these things. But it takes a made-up mind. It takes commitment to study the word of God. It takes purposeful time set aside to worship by reading, by, to worship by studying, to worship. You have to fight sleep sometimes. Strongest people I've known. We're talking about strength here. That the strongest people I've known have never appeared to be so strong. Strongest people I've known have never appeared to be the strongest people out there. If you look at the men I mentioned, Dr. Charles Stanley and Dr. Ravi Zacharias, they were not impressive in the way that they would look. They didn't look like muscle-bound athletes. And it's the same thing with the people I know in this faith walk. A lot of us are going through health issues. A lot of us that I've met in Concord and back home in Pennsylvania and different places they have issues. They're going through 10, 20 years and, and it seems like their life is falling apart in some areas at times. Not all the time, but at times. And it seems like we're going through and there's no end. But guess what? We're not supposed to appear to have it going on. Because this is an upside down kingdom. My strength is not an outward strength. You see, the Apostle Paul was beaten and battered. 
The, the, the 12 apostles were beaten and battered. The first century church was beaten and battered and stoned and, and raped and made an example of and martyred and all these things as we read about in the history of the church. But not only there, it says in the word of God that all throughout time that people persecuted the prophets and murdered the prophets, the men and of God, the women of God were always, they always had a bullseye on their head. And what's going on across the world today, the martyrdom and the persecution of the church, of the faithful, is because we've always had a bullet wound or a bullseye on our head. But we won't leave out of here until God says so. We won't leave out of here until it's our time to go. We won't leave out of here until it's appointed. The Bible says in the word of God that it's appointed once for a man to die. I'm not going to die until it's my turn. Nobody can take me up out of here. That The proof was in the pudding. I've been through too many surgeries. I've been through too many things in my lifetime and have come out stronger by faith. And I've seen it in the lives of my friends and my family members and those who were in this walk together and we're fighting for each other and we're praying for one another and we're holding each other up. Why? Because we're stronger together, but no one can take us out of here. No one can persecute us beyond what God's going to allow in our lives because he is our strength and he makes ways out of no way. And we're getting stronger. I'm meeting more and more people. And we're in this road and this path together. And doors are opening here in Concord. Doors are opening among ministries. Where we're out in the streets and things are going on. And we're starting to see. Because there's strength in the in the correct. Well, one woman I know, she says the true worshipers. The true worshipers are here in the streets. The true worshipers may never make it into the church house. But they're out here in the streets and they're just waiting. They're just waiting for a little spark. And they're getting strength from people they should never get strength from. Because we're on our knees early in the morning and the Spirit of God is lighting a fire in our soul. And we're getting up and we're getting ready and we're mobilizing and we're taking back. We don't care what the news says. We don't care what the, who the president is. We don't care who likes us and who loves us. But we're mobilizing by faith. We're getting up in the morning and we're calling on the name of God early in the morning to get our orders. You know, the president gets up early in the morning, whoever it is, and he gets a briefing. Family, have you been getting your briefing lately? I thank God we have a seven o'clock morning prayer because we need our briefing early in the morning. We need to hear. It's not so much what am I saying to God, but what's he saying to me? We're talking about a position of strength. I'm going to carry on. I'm sorry. But we need to begin on our busy days strong. Now, y'all know I love coffee, right? We need to begin our busy day strong, not just with a good cup of coffee, but with some time spent in our source of strength. Who's your source of strength, family? Take five minutes or an hour or more if we're really disciplined in prayer and Bible reading. They can make the difference in our day, not because of the new car, not because of the new house. We don't serve the Lord because he's a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat. We are soldiers in an army. We used to sing a soul song. I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. And we're awaiting our order. I said in the former teaching, what would we do if the God of the universe, the creator and the sustainer of the worlds, had a plan for me? What if I was like Paul and there was a boat that I had to get on? Or there was a, a plane that I had to get on? Or there, there was a trip that I had to make and I had to leave in an hour? I don't have time, family. 
to get myself together. I don't have time. We don't have time for one of these old days. I'm going to get myself together. Later for that. Later for, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. God, look, God had to get Peter on that boat. The apostles had places they had to go. And they had to go now. And they had to leave tonight. And they had to be there by a certain time. And there wasn't time to mature. You had to mature while you were running. You had to mature on the way. You had to get there and, and whatever, you better fake it. As they say, till you can make it because you have to, you have to keep the spirit of God better be leading you. There's not time to get yourself together. There's not time to be immature anymore. Can't you see what's going on in this world? Yes, we look weak. Yes, we look falling apart, but it's an upside down kingdom and we're much stronger than you would think that we are. We're much more powerful than you would think that we are. We're much more of an overcomer than you think that we are. We're much more conquerors than you would think that we are because he who is in us is greater, is greater. He who is in us is greater than he that is in the world. My brother Jordan always says, he's like a spiritual son to me. My brother Jordan always says the reason why we have con constant weakness and constant sin in our life is because we lack intimacy with God. In the morning, early in the morning, he also says all the time, who would be in a relationship with a man? Or who would be in a relationship with a woman if you never spent time together? If you never spent time together. The reason why you get so much power by worshiping the Lord early in the morning in prayer. I'm not just saying get on your knees. Bless me, Father. I'm going through this and I'm going through that. And my kids need this and my wife needs that. And No. On your knees. What is the weight of your heart? What I know, I know the circumstances. I know there's issues. I know there's details. I know all of that. But what is the weight of your heart? What is keeping you up at night? What is causing you to lose sleep? What is causing you heartache and pain? What is keeping you from your family? What is stopping you from picking up the phone and calling your loved one? What is stopping you from changing the world and changing your situation? What is stopping you from praying for your enemies and loving those who persecute you? Who is stopping you and what is stopping you from getting out there? I heard of a, of a man whose wife who got saved and his wife told him, Either either you pick God or me because look I didn't when I married you you weren't you wasn't a Christian and and, and I, I didn't marry you that way and and either you, you choose this life or, or me and and he chose he, look he loved that woman he loved her they had a beautiful relationship she wasn't abusive he wasn't abusive they they had a lot of intimacy and they had a close relationship and they did everything together. But he, she said, look, I'm not about this. But he chose God and, and it broke his heart. It broke his heart. Sometimes when we choose God, it breaks our heart. There are relationships in my life that I wish things were different, but I choose God. And it breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. There are people that I want in my life that I love. And I'm not picking on anybody in my biological family. I'm just saying there are people that I have loved in my life. And if I could have, I would have had things differently. And it hurts. But I choose God because the direction Things were going. It was not of God. It was not in God's will. 
I'm talking about a position of strength. What is God's will for our life? What is God's purpose for our life? What are his orders? Get up early in the morning. Stay up late at night. Call on the Lord like you did when you wanted that mortgage to go through. When you wanted your children to get healed. When you're waiting for your wife to say yes. Call on the Lord and bring your burdens to him. We sung a song, I, I take my burdens to the Lord and I leave them there. It's a choice that we make, but it's a choice that we make on our knees and we're crying out to him because we don't have the power to do it on our own. I'm talking about addictions that are in our life. We don't have the power to give it up. But if we get on our knees and we spend time with him and we cry out to him, Father, Daddy God, I need you. I need you. I can't take it anymore. I hate the way my life is going. I've lost everyone I've loved. Everything seems like it's falling apart and it fell apart yesterday. Lost my job. Lost my health. I have nothing left. Lord, heal me. Deliver me. Set me free. But set me free for a work. Set me free for a purpose. Not to just have what they call life insurance, eternal life insurance, where I know my place is in heaven, but I want to tear down the gates of hell along the path. I want to tear down. I want to be mobilized for God in this earth. I want to be an example. I shared yesterday, last night, about I got my leg. Finally, I got my prosthetic leg and it's been one issue after another over the past five years where my, it seemed like one wound after another on my feet. And it was, it was such an ordeal, but God was with me and I have testimonies. You can go back in my, my, my YouTube videos and you can see all my testimonies there. And I thank God for it. And, you know, but God has been with me every step of the way. And in a position of strength where my body has failed me, but he has been my strength. He has been my, my power in a, in a, in, in a position where my life seems like it's been on pause in so many ways, but he has been power in the pause. He has opened up doors and, and, and because of my issues, I had a voice among the disabled. I had a voice among People that are strangers that I met in the hospitals, strangers that I meet in parking lots and strangers that I meet in restaurants and coffee shops, strangers that I meet among the homeless here in Concord, strangers that I used to meet when I worked at SEPTA in Pennsylvania, strangers that I meet here and there and everywhere because I'm going through issues. People see, they see the very power of God working. And it's nothing, it's not me to boast, but it's God. I boast nothing but God. I boast in nothing but God. I'm not boasting in me, but I boast all in the Lord. He has been the secret of my strength. He has opened doors that no man can shut. He has made ways that no man can make for me. He has done the impossible. He has protected me from dangers. I said a prayer the other day, Lord, Protect me from dangers seen and unseen. And that's not just me saying out of my mouth, but that's the very power of God. That's the very word of God that he protects us from dangers seen and unseen. When Paul was shipwrecked, when he was on the island of Malta and everything was falling apart and he was bit by a serpent and then this happened and then that happened and then he was in prison and then he, he had to meet with this one. He had to meet with that one and he was on house arrest and everything seemed seemed like it was impossible. The Lord was making ways out of no ways and this, the word of God was advancing and the word of God was advancing and the word of God was advancing and I'm not comparing myself to any, any great preacher, any great man of God, but I'm just saying in some small way, 
family in some small way or in some large way. God could do it through me and God can do it through you. Gracious God, our Father, our Lord, we love you. Lord, we worship you right now. Lord, we thank you for how you compel us to get busy. You compel us, Lord God, to make that phone call. You can pray, you compel us, Lord God, to take that walk. You compel us, Lord God, to pray for those. We, we catch ourselves praying for people. When we used to sit there quietly, we could pick, we, we catch ourselves praying for people. We catch ourselves, Lord God, speaking to those out there who we normally would just drive right by. We could, we compel, we're compelled to embrace those, Lord God, who are untouchable. We could, we're compelled, Lord God, to love those, Lord God, who would normally use us and take us for granted and talk about us. But Lord God, it's not just a movie on TV. It's active and it's alive in us and it's happening, Lord God. And it's all you. And we love you. We thank you for those who are inspired to pray. We thank you for those who are changing the world. Lord God, we ask you to be, Lord God, in the land. To grant peace and joy in the midst of the pressure. In the midst of the pressure that we're all feeling right now. Give us peace and joy, Lord God. And we love you. Mold us and shape us after your will, Lord God. While we are waiting, yielding, and still. Lord God, we love you and we bless your name forever. In Jesus' name, I love you, family. And share my videos if you like, and I'll share yours. And, and let's change the world, even if the world is just our house, even if the world is a street, even if the world is our block or our town or our state or our country or our whatever. Lord, let's, let's change some things in Jesus' name. Let's change this right here. And let's change this right here, our head and our hearts, and let's lean on the Lord, let us get up early in the morning, call on the Lord, let us praise him, let us honor him, he is the one, as I said in the first, in the first scripture reference, he is the one that has saved us, the doctors treated us, the landlord spared us, the drug dealer bullet passed us, but the Lord saved us, in Jesus name, I love you family, God bless.